Hello, Brian Miller here, author, speaker, magician, podcast host, and audio nerd. And welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. And in this video, we are doing part two of a multi-part series in how I do vocal processing in post, one of the most requested videos, one of the most common questions I get all the time. I do this, uh, all the different things I'm teaching in this series, I do in, in really excruciating detail in my online course, Audio 101 for Content Creators, which you can find at audio101.info. Out of respect to the people who've paid for that course, I'm not going into tremendous depth or detail here, but I am going to show you the technique and you can take them and run with them uh, if you want. What we did in the first video is we used, and if you haven't seen the first video, you have to uh, see the first video before watching this one. So just go here, I think that's where it is, or link in the description and then come back and watch this. You literally, this won't make any sense if you haven't watched the first one. So on the first one, all we've done so far is subtractive EQ. We threw a very, very gentle denoising uh, plugin on here. It wasn't really necessary on this particular vocal track, but it might be for you. Having said that, vocal denoising plugins uh, are somewhat expensive. And then we did the really serious thing, which is this. I went through and did subtractive EQ to pull out very narrow bands of all the, and let me uh, bring this back, very, very narrow bands right here, as you can see, of all of the problem frequencies in my voice. So we started with this. Here it's off. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. And here it's on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. So you should really be able to hear what a what a difference. I mean, if all you did was subtractive EQ, you'd make a huge difference. It balanced out the tone, it balanced out the voice, it got rid of the nasal quality and all the buildup of frequencies. It's fantastic. So what comes next? First, denoising or de-reverb. We already talked about that. Subtractive EQ, we already did that. Next, compression. Compression's goal is to even out the highs and lows, the louds and quiets of a sound source. The goal of using compression in this situation is to have the vocal track, the voice, the narration stay at a consistent volume. What you don't want in a vocal track, in a voice, in dialogue, is for it to be getting louder and softer all the time. Yes, you want that in an act or in a movie, right? You want dynamics, but not when we're doing voiceover or narration, and especially not when you're going to combine it later with music in the background because it gets all muddied and then people need to turn up and turn down their volume constantly. It's, it's really frustrating to listen to and we turn that off immediately when we get frustrated by it. Even if we're not able to articulate what's frustrating us, that's one of the number one things that turns people off about audio is inconsistent volume. So we're going to use compression. I'm going to grab my personal favorite standard kind of compression, which is from Waves, from the Waves Gold package. It's the R compressor. Again, this comes in a very expensive package. You don't need to spend any money. You can use the native compressor that comes with your software. I used all the native plugins in my software for years and years in my early to mid 20s before I could afford to even buy a single plugin, let alone the hundreds and hundreds that I have now. So basics of compression. Threshold, wherever you set the threshold to, anything that goes over that threshold starts getting compressed. So the threshold is at what point, at what volume level, essentially, does the compressor start working on your track? The ratio is how tightly it's clamping down. So let's say you have a two, let's just set it at two, boom. Two to one ratio, what that means is, and let's set the threshold at negative 10 for now. These are just an example. Negative 10 threshold, ratio at two. What that means is anything that goes over negative 10 decibels is going to get hit with a two to one compression. So for every two decibels that go over negative 10, the compressor will only let the source go up one decibel. For every two it goes over the threshold, a two to one will only let it go one over. A four to one ratio, for every four decibels that goes over the threshold, it'll only let it go one over, okay? So 
the higher the ratio number, the more it's going to clamp down. In other words, if you had a 2 to 1 ratio and you had your threshold at negative 10 and your sound source jumped to negative 6, okay? So you jumped to negative 6. So if you're a negative 10 threshold and the sound source goes to negative 6, it went 4 decibels over the threshold, right? From negative 10 to negative 6 is 4. 4 decibels over the threshold. At a 2 to 1 ratio, it will only let those 4 decibels go 2 decibels. In other words, a source without compression would jump to negative 6, but if this compressor was on with these settings, it would only go to negative 8. It would cut it in half. If I had a 4 to 1 ratio on and it jumped to negative 6, it would only let it go 1 decibel instead of 4. So normally it would have gone to negative 6. In this case, it would have only gone to negative 9. I know I flew through those numbers really quickly. Compression is complicated, and it's one of the most valuable parts of my online course. Uh, but listen carefully to what I'm telling you right now, and you will be able to learn this for free. Uh, attack and release are how quickly the compressor comes in and how long it holds on before it lets go. Just take my advice, set your attack to 3 and your release to 30, and for most spoken word, you'll be in good shape. And then the gain, the makeup gain, is how much you want to increase the overall level of the track after the compression has taken place. Generally, you set the makeup gain to the same amount of compression you're doing. So let's go back to my earlier example. If you're at negative 10, and your sound source jumps to negative 6, and you've got a, let's say, 4 to 1 ratio. In that case, it's only going to let it go from negative 10 to negative 9, right? Because 4 decibels louder at a 4 to 1 ratio means it only gets to go up 1 decibel instead of 4. So, if I'm doing 3 decibels of gain reduction, right? Okay, follow the numbers. 4 decibels, we're squashing that down to only one decibel, which means we've reduced three decibels of overall volume. If we're on average reducing the entire track by three decibels, then we could add three decibels to our makeup gain. So after we've squashed the track, we move the entire track up by the same amount we squashed it by. That's why a lot of people think compression makes your uh, source louder. Compression doesn't actually make your source louder. It makes it much quieter. It takes the loudest stuff and it squashes it down. But then we get to use makeup gain to move the overall track louder at the end. That's makeup gain. It's not actually compression. It's just usually built into compression plugins. I'm actually going to set my ratio at 5 to 1. I like to use a very, very aggressive, aggressive ratio when I'm doing vocal processing because I want my voice to stay at an even level. And I'm just going to address, uh, adjust my threshold until I'm getting about... 3 to 4 decibels of gain reduction. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this to peg somewhere in the 3 to 4 range. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Can you see how we're doing right now? About 2 decibels of gain reduction. It keeps coming to about here. So I'm going to drop the threshold to, let's say, 13 and see if we get it to peg around 4. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career. Now we've got the compressor working well. I'm going to add the makeup gain. I'm going to add four decibels of makeup gain because we're doing on average four decibels of gain reduction, maybe three, three decibels of gain reduction. So let's listen off and then on. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. So now we've done a little bit of denoising, subtractive EQ, and compression. Sounding great. The last thing I'm going to do before the end is additive EQ. You always do subtractive EQ before compression and additive after. Why? Because compression is going to clamp down on the overall sound source. So if you add EQ before compression, everything you add then it's going to get clamped down by the compressor. You basically undo everything you just did if you add stuff before you clamp it down. So we subtract first 
then we clamp down with the compressor, and then after that, we're going to add in some additional frequencies. And in this case, usually I'm just going to add a little bit of brightness because I have a fairly dark voice. So I'm going to be looking to add a bit of brightness. And there's a lot of different ways I can do that. What plugin should I grab? Uh, let me grab this plugin. Now, again, you use whatever free plugin you have. For example, here's Here's the native free plugin that comes with this. You, this is something you, the, the kind of thing you might be looking at. You can just go in here and grab stuff and move it around uh, and and change you know change change the 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 cue and you can do all the same stuff. It's just not as pretty. But I'm going to use this particular plugin that I like very much, the uh, the VEQ3 plugin from Waves. Uh, this is supposed to kind of emulate an analog, a physical box from the olden days, and I like the I like the quality that it has. So I'm going to grab this 4.8 kilohertz right here, and I'm going to add, let's say, three decibels right there at 4.8 kilohertz. Now, 4.8 kilohertz, let's look back here, that's right around here. So we pulled out the offending frequencies. Oh, here it is. We pulled out the offending frequencies, and now... I'm going to essentially go like this. I'm going to add some frequencies right in the area, right about there, where you get the clarity, the crispness of a voice. But I'm going to do it after the compression. So 4.8, I added 3. Let's do off and then on and see how that sounds. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. Okay, so now let's do something really fun. Let's turn all the plugins off that we've done, listen, and then turn them all back on. I'm going to let it play through the whole thing now so you can really get a sense for this. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. If you learn to weave a network of people who trust you, who feel heard, understood, and valued in your presence, there will always be someone willing to hire you, buy from you, or work with you. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go Beyond Networking. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. If you learn to weave a network of people who trust you, who feel heard, understood, and valued in your presence, there will always be someone willing to hire you, buy from you, or work with you. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go Beyond Networking. Did you hear how big a difference that made? So just a couple of quick plugins and you are good to go. And for what it's worth, in this situation, the voice denoiser, you really could just turn that off. It'd probably sound almost the same. Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking. In my situation, I could get, like I said, in a dead silent treated room, I don't need that. Um, if you're in a room that has some noise that has heaters or fans in the background. Um, if you, you know, then you might need a denoiser. If you're in a room that's got some echo, you might need a de-reverb plug-in. Um, those are various things I don't need to deal with, and I didn't want to bog down this tutorial uh, with things that you basically have to spend money on. I mean, there's really no way to do denoising de or de-reverb um, well without spending real money. So I just wanted to deal with the kind of things you can actually do without spending a fortune. Hopefully this was helpful. In the next video, I'm going to show you now how I balance that vocal track with the music in order to create the final result where it feels like the voice and the music fit together and belong. There's a little trick to it, a couple of little tricks that I think you'll find really interesting. Until then, sound better, level up. My name is Brian Miller. Thanks so much for sticking with me. And uh, always remember, our world is a shared experience. So get out there and make the day a good one. That got weirdly motivational. Anyway, see you soon.